Sometimes life gets so crazy and you have to just reorganize yourself. share crochet and knitting patterns and tutorials as well as finished projects and lots and lots of fun fiber things. Today I thought it might be fun to bring you another whip video. If you have heard the term whip and have always wondered what it means, it is work in progress. I am usually one of those people that has multiple works in progress going and I have tried to limit some of my whips before and I just find that I do better having more projects going. I like to have variety and it just gives me inspiration. I love to try new yarns and new projects projects and just it just helps my creativity I think so me personally I know there are a lot of people that just like to work on one project at a time and that is awesome and I have actually tried that but I find that I get more inspired and more excited when I have multiple projects going and I can go back and forth so I wanted to share with you guys my whip strategy for July I kind of wanted to try something a little bit different this time to see if I could be even more productive and get even more projects done I hope that it is inspiring and maybe will give you some ideas for your own projects so I usually work on my projects at night. That's when my daughter's asleep and my husband works nights and so it just works well for me to work on my projects at night even though that is like my least productive time. I don't know. Let me know. Comment below if you're also like me but that is like my super least productive time of day. It's also the time of day that I have the most time to work on my projects and what I was finding is that I would be working on a project and then I would complete it and I would still have a couple of hours before I wanted to go to bed or something and I didn't have another project already started to just dive into and start tackling that project. Because it is my least productive time, I didn't want to start a new pattern, read through it all, kind of get an idea of it, or if I'm designing something, figure out measurements, or having to go get new yarn that I didn't have right next to me, or just any of those things that seem super daunting around 9 or 10 o'clock at night. So what I thought I would do for the month of July is choose five whips, actually have six back here, but I thought five would be a good number, and what I would do is just read through the pattern of all of them, make notes if I needed to, get all the yarn together, get them all put in separate project bags and start each project. So whether that be casting on or if you get started with crochet or whatever it is, I would have everything started so that I could just go from one project to the next once I finished one of my works in progress. So I wanted to share with you what my five projects are or six if I get to six, but my projects for the month of July, I'm going to see how far along I can get. I mean, I don't anticipate finishing all of these in the month of July, but at least I can get a head start. Some of them, actually one of them, this one in particular I have already started and also these granny squares I have already started but all the other ones I have not started yet so I was going to go through each project and share them with you tell you what yarns I'm using what pattern I'm using if I'm designing something myself if it's a pattern that I'm hoping to come out with and just share all those things with you and hopefully give you some inspiration for your own works in progress so let's get started first up on the list is a free pattern from Lauren the Gang I will link it down below if you'd like to check it out I don't think it's going to be free forever I hope it is still free when I'm filming this video, but go ahead and go over there and download it if you are wanting to make it. So it is the lights up, lights up, lights out. Hold on. Let me see. Lights up. It's lights up. So it's the lights up cardigan. I don't have any wool in the game yarn in this, but I really wanted to use up some scrap yarn, lots of my scrap yarn. It just makes me feel so good when I have a project that I can use up multiple skeins or multiple balls of my scrap yarn. So that is what I did here. I've got a little bit of knit collage in here. I've got some, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. I mixed some mohair and some hand dyed yarn from Hobby Lobby. I think that's it. I think that's the majority. So Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby. Oh, there is some Lion Brand Wool Ease in here. It's made in several different panels, and so it's been fun to kind of see the panels come together. They are just kind of all over the place, so we'll see how it comes together in the end, but I'm very excited to seam it together. Obviously, there are so many of my favorite colors in here, neons and just pops of lots of amazing colors. I was especially excited about this hand-dyed yarn mixed with mohair. The mohair is from Spectrum Fiber, I believe. It's leftover from my as if tea so I cannot wait to finish this one up and I'm not that far off Remember how much I love this yarn combo? Well, I ran out of it, so I had to dive into my stash and choose a couple of other yarns. I'm really happy with the way it turned out and I hope the sweater will come together in the end. Grow With Me 
party. If you guys have watched the last couple of my videos, then you've already heard me talk about this. It's part of the Nick Collage Spring 2022 Make Along, and I just haven't had a chance to start it yet. It's a brioche cardigan, which I'm super excited to get going on that because I have never done brioche before, and I have always wanted to learn how to do brioche. So that is something that I'm going to get started on very soon, obviously here in a little bit. Now this one is going to take a little bit more prep work. I have to make sure I read over the pattern. I have to watch the tutorials on brioche. Also, I need to frog this sweater. So this is the yarn that I'm going to be using for this. First things first, I needed to frog this sweater. So I had to figure out how I originally had assembled the sweater. And I think that I may have figured it out. and if you guys have heard me talk about her yarn before it is amazing it is just it is so amazing i love it so much the other skeins are from her and y'all i mean it is just so awesome there are just so many textures and colors and i cannot wait to put it in my grow with me cardi so i'm very excited to get started on that and also learn a new skill i just cannot wait but i'm definitely gonna have to make some notes i'm gonna have to make sure that i stay on track with this pattern i know i'm gonna have to pay more attention with this one let me know if you're like me but sometimes i like to have at least a project that is a little bit more complicated or something I'm working on designing and then I also like to have a mindless project so if I'm super tired and I just don't have any energy to think then I like to work on that mindless project whether it be like a blanket or something that just has easy stitches let me know below if you feel the same way or let me know down in the comments what your whip strategy is if you have one if you like to do one project at a time or if you like to have multiple projects I would love to hear it Y'all, I just realized that I had my windows open, so I hope the previous clips were not really hard to hear. <laughs> but I went ahead and closed them, so now you can hear me better. Next up on the list is something I am very excited about, also a little bit nervous, but it's a pattern I've been working on for so, so long, like years. It's gone through many phases, and I think it's finally to the point where I feel like I can release it, but I do have to go through the pattern grading and all of that. So I purchased some new yarn to test out with it, and I'm really excited about the colors for it. It is Paintbox Erin cotton yarn. I have not tried their cotton Erin. So I wanted to show you guys this paint box cotton Erin in these colors that I got for the sweater that I'm going to make into a pattern. This is the color Dusty Rose and it's really more of a purple so I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure where the rose comes in but y'all I'm obsessed with this purple color right now. I just love it so much so I'm super excited to crochet this up. And I just really liked how these colors came together. And this one is slate green. It's a really pretty teal color. This one is light caramel. Sort of like a super light orange. I mean, I guess it's more like a melon. I would say like a melon probably is what it reminds me of. And then this one is the last color that I got and it is lime green. Y'all, I thought it was just a super fun and unique color combo. I love a unique color combination and I love trying new colors out. And so I'm super excited to see how this comes together in the sweater. I have tried their cotton DK. I used it for Amigurumi, which I love so, so much. I was excited to pick up the Erin Way yarn from Lovecrafts, and I will link that down below if you'd like to check it out. But I'm very excited about the colors that I chose, and I cannot wait to get started on this sweater. It will be my first garment pattern. You guys may remember me talking about my pattern grading bootcamp class with Julie Robinson. She is so talented. She just has so much knowledge about fit and sizing and all those things and so I was super excited to take her class and I learned so so much and I feel like I can actually approach grading for multiple sizes with more confidence now and I'm going to be working on this project. I'm going to get it done for you guys. I'm determined to do that. Definitely going to be sending out a pattern tester application once I get this particular sweater finished and get the pattern all written up. If you'd be interested in testing this pattern, I will put the link to the application down below. It's going to be a Tunisian crochet sweater and I am just so, so excited to get it out and I cannot wait to dive into these colors of yarn. I'm super excited about the color combo. This 
this paint box yarn was slightly lighter than what I used for my original sweater, so I needed to make a gauge swatch to make sure that my measurements would be correct for my final sweater. wait to mention it until I figure out exactly if that's the name that I want to go with. Next up on my whip list to get started on are these Wool in the Gang socks. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, then you know that I started these socks so long ago. It's super funny because I just got done filming a video where I wanted to see how many pairs of socks I could get finished in a month. Well, I'll tell you more about that video when it comes out. I think it's gonna come out after this one, so that's the plan anyway. But it's hilarious because I did not even work on these socks during that video <laughs> process which I totally intended to, but for some reason I just forgot or I don't know. But anyway, I really want to get these socks done. I love them so much. And I think now that I've made several other pairs of socks, I feel more comfortable to get going on these. These can kind of be a beast when it comes to tension. So the design forms as you work your way around the sock. So it's not like you're doing color work or anything. It's just the design has to be lined up specifically. So tension is super important for these. And I did at one point get the tension right. I think it was on this color. Y'all, I started like all the color well I didn't start the other color I started two different colors thinking that my tension would be different on one of them it's hilarious I first dove into my pink paws colorway but then I realized that I had cut the original ball of yarn when I started the socks the first time and these socks are super specific in regards to the way the colors change so I decided to dive into my candy claws colorway instead socks that I made that I do prefer the magic loop method so I wanted to do DPNs as well double pointed needles I wanted to try out the double pointed needles to see if I like that better I actually started out doing magic loop from the beginning for small circumference knitting and then did DPNs later which I know most people start out with DPNs honestly I am a magic loop girl I just it's my preferred method I can do DPNs but they're just not my favorite I mean they're kind of awkward to me and I think it's just because I learned on magic loop and I know that some people are like hardcore double pointed needles all the way but I think that I'm definitely a magic loop girl so I'm excited to get going on these and finally have some more socks don't want to give too much away about the video but I am a little bit obsessed with making socks now so I can't wait to get going on these number five on my list of whips is this blanket now you may have seen my picture in my community tab I do post in my community tab pretty frequently so if you are interested in seeing what I'm working on or sometimes I ask questions on there if you want to check that out then just go to my channel and the community tab or you can find it in your subscription sometimes but I do post on there pretty frequently and recently I was playing around with stitches and I started a blanket I actually bought this yarn back in November when I was visiting my mom we went to Hobby Lobby and I got this yarn for a blanket for our couch and I wasn't like 100% loving the colors but it's very soft look at fuzz in my eye <laughs> so i found this yarn and it is the burnat fleece forever by yarn inspirations and i do have to say it is super super soft and so that's what i loved about it and it was a good weight i believe it's super bulky yes it's super bulky so i definitely wanted something bulky so that it would work up quickly and i thought it would be nice and cozy and i do love the feel of this yarn but i was not wild about the colors i mean they're pretty colors but they're a little more traditional than i go for i really like funky colors and bright colors and like neons and stuff like that well you guys know if you've been following along for a while i was really hoping that these colors would go well with my rug I did get white too. But once I started playing around with the stitches and as I was getting farther along on my blanket, I felt like it looked like a baby blanket, which is great. And I was like, oh wow, this is great. I can make a baby blanket and then also make a regular size blanket pattern. So what I think I'm gonna do is make this yarn in these colors into a baby blanket pattern. And I'll do a tutorial here on YouTube. Then I will find some other yarn. I'm not sure what kind yet I want to use. But I definitely wanna get some colors that I really, really like and something that 
that's super soft and something that also that will wash well because I definitely want a blanket that I can just throw in the washing machine and not worry about it falling apart and things like that. So that is next on my list as far as the whips go. I don't think this one's going to take me very long. Hoping that I can also use this as a gift. So not only can I make a tutorial for you guys, but I also want to make a baby gift for some of our friends. For not only the baby blanket tutorial but also in some different yarn a regular sized blanket tutorial yeah regular size like a couch throw that's what i'm thinking if you're wanting a super soft and super bulky yarn for a blanket this seems like it is really good now i have not you know washed it and like seen how it wears or anything but it is very very soft so technically that was my fifth whip but i did have one more project that i wanted to get started on and that has to do with these greeny squares here I actually made these granny squares a long, long time ago. I have a video tutorial on how to make them here on YouTube, and then I also have a blog post if you like written instructions better. But I really love these granny squares, and I was originally going to cover a chair in them. You'll see that in the video if you want to go watch the tutorial. We have moved since then, and I don't have that chair in my room anymore. So I wanted to do something with these granny squares because I love them so much, and I just they're just sitting up there not doing anything. And so I thought it would be a fun project to work on with these. So I'm still kind of like working out in my mind, but that's something I'm gonna have to kind of design as I go. Originally I was like, do I make a pillow? Do I make a blanket? And all those would be cute too, but honestly, I think I wanna make a top. So we will see. I thought it might be fun to make a matching top for my daughter and myself. And so we'll see how that goes, but I'm gonna kind of sketch out some things and see if I like them and we will see what I come up with. Really excited to actually do something with these squares because they've been sitting up there in my little area for so long and I was like, I really need to get going on something with this. Plus they're like really fun colors so I thought they might be fun for summer. Join me for all the fun crocheting knit things. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!